Hi and welcome to the Success with Savita podcast. I'm very excited to have you here today because it's a, I know I'm looking forward to this conversation. It's going to be very different from the ones I'm used to and it's a huge honor to have you here. I've been reading your uh, bio. I've been looking at your work. You had such an illustrious uh, career. So welcome to the show and welcome to our conversation. I'm talking about funding and VCs in this whole space. Access to funding is the biggest hurdle faced by you know entrepreneurs and in particular women entrepreneurs we know what the numbers are in the industry so how does one actually create an investable startup i know it's a very broad question but if you could share one two three things that someone should keep in mind while creating such a startup um, from your experience yeah so I, you know before i get started on that i just kind of remembered uh, when you said you invested in angel um, um, angel invested in a woman owned startup um, you know, so for example, when I was talking about jobs for her, right? I mean, my my wife who started that startup and we exited it successfully. Um, she took a break for almost uh, four or five years uh, after that, right? And and now she's again embarked on on a new startup idea, which is very women focused. Not well, not entirely women focused, but you know, it's into wellness centers and spas and and, and beauty salons and all of that. Um, but but it's you know it does become a challenge when four or five years later you want to get started again. But again, that uh, the I'm just fascinated by the grit uh, and and motivation and um, the ability to get kick started right back into where you were you you had been a while back. So just wanted to mention that. But uh, yeah, going back to uh, access to funding, I mean. Um, you know, having uh, run um, multiple startups myself and having created a few successful startups, um, um, I'd like to highlight maybe um, a few ingredients, um, maybe two or three, that I believe create an investable startup. Now, this is there's nothing earth shaking over here. Everyone talks about it, and this applies to anyone, um, women or men founders. Um, and, and I want to briefly touch upon also the women founders and perhaps what is required off of them. But I think in general, for an investable startup, you certainly need to have a great execution team. VCs absolutely look out for robust, well-rounded teams with complementary talents. Um, you know, you're always at risk and you would always be doing hard selling if you're a solo founder. You need, you need a team, right? Uh, nobody knows everything, you know, and, and single person always becomes a risk. So at an early stage, of course, you have no real assets. Your your team and your people are your real assets. So, um, so to, to bring about the team together, creating the right culture, very, very important. The second one, and again, the most critical thing in, in running anything that is investable is creating great product market fit. Um, you have to build something that people actually want. You have to be able to demonstrate that you're solving a real and actually a growing problem that make the people use your product and also want to pay for it because unless they're going to pay for it, you know, it's just a fluff and it's a, it's a kind of a free product that you're giving away and it will only last so much. Um, um, and, and then of course, you know that VC is always back, uh, back growth, really high growth startup. So the rest always becomes PR, but, um, so one, one really needs to talk to customers, get them a deal, but get them to show actual money because unless there is money in, in what you're trying to do, you know, all, all hell breaks loose, right? So you, you VCs love that, that you're creating something that, that is um, actually going to bring in money. And then the other thing that VCs like to see, and because they are, they are data crunchers, they, they believe in what they see in data. Uh, you have absolutely have to have tons of data ready. You need to keep a lot of the me metrics handy while talking with them. Uh, it could be, um, you know, unit economics. It could be around funnel metrics. It could be around your CAT to LTV uh, ratios. Uh, uh, it, it could be uh, revenues in differentiated dimensions. Um, could be by, by headcount, by time, by campaigns, you know, whatever else. And, and why, why do you need all of this? Well, VCs love data and, and um, you know, they also want to know that you're tracking what matters the most, because if you're tracking thousands of other things that don't really matter to the business, it's pointless. So you really need to track what matters most for the business, the kind of business that you're running. And then going beyond these three things that are in general true for every startup, as far as raising funding as a women entrepreneur, um, there are a few things that one 
women should always keep in mind. I think um, you have to build a network, right? And and women often tend to be uh, have great people skills and and they're good at networking in general. Um, and and if you are indeed good at that, then you have to use that to your advantage. Uh, and before you start fundraising, know what the you know what it means to to raise funding. Know the the networks that are out there. Um, in fact, find women angel investors if you are at that startup stage and trying to raise feed funding. I mean, there's lots of angel funds um, and women-owned funds that are there, which which would be would 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 love to see women-based ideas. So I think essentially one really needs to do their homework properly. The other thing is that. Um, you know, women need to believe in themselves, right? I mean, they need to believe in themselves and their business. Um, you, they need to show their expertise, their confidence and their grasp of numbers. Um, because, um, uh, you know, essentially they are the, their business, right? I mean, it's, it's really them that are actually creating that business. So from the eyes of the investor, woman who's running the woman that's running the business is the business. So, so it's really important that uh, uh, they, they exude that level of confidence. And um, and of course, one should remember that the VCs are investing in in the in that particular founder, and therefore that founder's idea. So they have to get convinced about um, about that particular idea. And then finally, like I said before, I mean, you know, you need to know your numbers really well and 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 be very confident of those figures and the numbers that you're churning. Fantastic tips. Uh, I'm really glad that you touched upon having data metrics and you know tracking your data because I feel like this is often something that a lot of business owners miss and especially I feel it's so true for small business owners. People think like I'm just starting out. Uh, I'm still in my first year. Do I really need to you know keep all these uh, you know dashboards and stuff? And then finally, when it's time to actually look at growth, that's when they have to go in number crunch and then they don't have they haven't tracked it. They don't know where to find it. They don't know. So it's it's really like putting yourself a little bit out of the game and then you know kind of starting over so i'm really so glad that you touched it so thank you for sharing that